I'm a Wiccan priestess and the founder of the Temple of Ara, and I'm going to give you uh, a quick introduction to setting up an altar. It's the uh, foundational practice and is um, most important because it's a means of shifting consciousness from the mundane, which is in fact sacred, to the sacred. It's really a way of getting that blindfold off so that you recognize the sacred that's all around you. So in fact, an altar can be made from absolutely mundane things. You can run into the kitchen and grab a bunch of bowls and uh, get to work. You can also work without anything. You don't need any props. You don't need any magical tools. You don't need any altar because you are already the altar. Uh, that is the meaning of Ara in Ara tradition, that uh, the altar is in the center of your soul. It's in your heart. And each of us is an altar where heaven and earth conjoin. But because the divine speaks to us in uh, symbols, uh, the table of correspondences, which is represented on the altar, is the vocabulary that we use in the old religions. Uh, so let's go through it and we'll do it quickly, all right? So uh, an altar can be high or low, it can be large or small, it really doesn't matter. Generally speaking, you set it up so that it's facing east, east or north, but depending on what you're going to do, you can, you can either place it uh, in the direction that uh, is, is related to the work that you want to do or facing the direction that you want to do. So you could have it facing south if you wanted to do um, a ritual for courage uh, or for inspiration, for strength. If you wanted to do uh, a spell for love, you could put your altar in the west or have it facing west because west is the direction of the emotions of the heart. Whenever we begin, we begin with purification. And uh, the simplest and oldest method of purification is uh, to wash, to wash your hands. You can take an entire shower beforehand. If you can't do that, uh, a little salt and water. Salt is purifying, it's cleansing, and it's uh, uh, a very simple way of, uh, of cleaning before. And um, the other way is with sage. This is uh, a, an herb that's used by Native Americans for purification, and it's also, interestingly enough, it, the same purpose in uh, the indigenous traditions of Europe. We also use sage for the same purpose, for purification. So, uh, in this classic model of a Wiccan altar, we have at the center an image of the Divine Feminine. This is uh, a copy of a Cycladic nude. It goes way back, thousands and thousands of years. Uh, and for uh, a symbol of uh, the god, I have uh, these antlers that uh, came from a hunt by a friend of mine who's a hunter, uh, over which I've said prayers of thanks. And also uh, the bowl, which is the traditional symbol of the goddess. This is the libation bowl uh, for offerings at the end, which is my favorite part, I think, of rituals because of the wisdom that everybody shares and reveals. And uh, it's a stag bowl, so it's got the masculine protecting the feminine. The east, which corresponds with air, is here represented by feathers, uh, many of them from a turkey that was uh, living up the block from me and got eaten by a fox. So um, I am using uh, his beautiful feathers to represent the element of air. Birds, air, um, corresponds with the mind, with the, uh, the direction of east, with uh, the beginning where the sun rises, and um, the powers of the mind, both imaginative and rational, both. Um, we express it in terms of language, speech, poetry, uh, creative thought, uh, analytical thought, laughter, uh, music, uh, birds, and bird song, flight. Uh, next. Uh, is the next point as we move around the circle. Um, we move from east and air and the creatures of the air to south, which is represented here by uh, a candle for flame, for fire, which is the direction of the south, of heat, of the sun. Uh, in the Australian traditions on the other side of the world, on the other side of the equator, um, for them, uh, fire is represented by the north. So for our Australian friends, we, we say hi down under and remember that for them, uh, north is associated with fire. In the, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the other way around and fire's in the South. So candle 
and an orange candle, because orange is the color of the South, fire, um, and will, energy, power. It's usually associated with the creatures of uh, fang and claw, uh, dragons and mountain lions, and the animals of the desert that are able to survive, and in fact thrive in the heat, in the strong heat. If we were moving around the circle, right, the next direction is the west, which is associated with water and the creatures of the water, the dolphins and the fish, and the whales and the otters, and all the creatures that play in the water. It's also associated with emotions, with love because it's water. Uh, and so that's represented here by an oversized shell, and in it is a bowl with water. Uh, and then, uh, continuing around the circle, we come to the north, which is, uh, for us, the direction of the earth, and um, here is in the form of a uh, fossil. And you see the spiral, which is uh, the symbol of life and in which there are wonderful mysteries for another conversation. And in the center of this, I'm going to place a marble uh, bowl, which I use as mortar and pestle, uh, so it serves double duty, always be efficient, with uh, salt, which is the element representing the earth. You can also use seeds. I like to use bird seed um, very often instead of salt, and then I uh, make that my offering. and. Um, and I distribute it outside to the birds when I'm done working. So uh, the altar uh, then contains as well uh, my chalice, which is the traditional symbol of the feminine, of the divine feminine, of the womb, of creation. And I have also a wand, which was made by uh, a brilliant student and artist uh, who lives in Ferrara with his extraordinary wife, another student. Uh, and is incredibly lovely and light. And I don't often have this out, but I have this time. Um, this is my athami, which is the sacred ritual knife, um, and uh, is used for the direction of energy because it's, made, it's a double-hilted blade. Uh, it has to be oiled periodically, only in this direction. And this was the first and the only athami that I've ever had and makes me feel like I belong in the woods someplace, which is where we all belong, frankly. As this represents the, the feminine impulse, the um, athami represents the masculine. And then you can decorate your altar with whatever is appropriate, with um, images of specific deities, if you're doing a certain kind of uh, work, or um, seasonally. Uh, fruits, flowers, whatever is in season, whatever is appropriate, and what's appropriate for your work. Uh, and the final thing that is placed on the altar um, is the symbol of the faith, which for us is uh, the pentacle, and uh, it's the five-pointed star. And it's a symbol of all four of the elements, as well as the fifth one, which is spirit, uh, and has um, a, a very profound and and gorgeous ancient symbolism, uh, which I invite you to explore when you have some time. Uh, this is uh, the essential form of uh, a traditional Wiccan altar and can be used to celebrate a Sabbath, uh, an Espat, uh, or for the making of any magic uh, for any purpose. Mm -hmm.